Welcome back to our video series for the Play Framework using Scala. We're really close to having our first web app. Uh, it's very much a web 1.0 web app. The first version of our task list completed. And the only feature that we are lacking right now is the ability to delete tasks. We can log in, we can create new users, and we can add tasks and we get to see the tasks that we have. But the one thing we're still missing is the ability to take them away. So here inside of our uh, view template for the for the tasks what I want to do is I want to have every task have a button associated with it and that button is going to when clicked it's going to say delete on it and when clicked the item that it's next to is going to go away uh, I will note the way I'm going to do this it isn't going to look real pretty but I'm fo focusing primarily on on uh, functionality you could certainly play with CSS and make everything on the site look much better than than what I'm doing right now. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, I want every task, each one of these, to have an associated form. They are all going to use the post method. Their action is going to be a delete method in our route. So as we've learned, using reverse routing is nice because if you mess something up or forget something, you'll get a compile error. So the action is routes dot task list one dot delete task. Now, because this is a post request, we need to include our CSRF token. Otherwise, we will get uh, an error saying that that we're not allowed to submit. I need to say something about what task it is I'm deleting and I need to have a, uh, the submit button that I'm going to have say delete instead. So we'll input type submit value delete. Okay that's that's the uh, the easy part. How are we going to know what it is that we are deleting? Uh, there are really two ways we could do that here. We could either do it by the text of the task. I have a problem with that because what if someone actually has the same text appearing multiple times in their task list? How do we know which one they wanted to delete? So I'm going to kind of reject that one. I want to instead go by the index of the task. So there are two aspects of this. First off, we have to, in our for loop, get the indices. We also have to have some way of attaching that information to the form. The standard way of doing this is to have a, a, an input whose type is hidden. Okay. And then inside of here, we give it a name, like everything else we want to read in our forms, and we give it a value. And that value is going to come from the program. I'm going to say at i there. This assumes that I have a variable i, which is the index of the task in this sequence of tasks. I can get that information by instead of just running through tasks, running through tasks dot zip with index. So now task will be the string for the task and i will be the index of that. And so we'll attach that hidden information here for all of our elements. Okay. As we did before, let's go ahead and let's stub out a delete task. We'll start off having it set equal to to do, and we'll put in a route for this. Controllers, task list task and that's enough for us to run it and log in and see what it looks like as I said it doesn't look real real nice but the goal is to make it so that when we click these things instead of just going to a to-do page those will go off of the page excellent we're making progress so how do we get them to go away well we need two things we need our controller and we need the part of the model that, that does this. The controller part is going to look a lot like our add task. In fact, let's go 
everything from the add task. So we have an action, it'll have an implicit request. We need the username because the index that we are deleting is an index in that user's list. Of uh, This is significant because I don't want to give, I don't want there to be some security hole where one user can delete the, the elements of someone else's uh, if they could somehow randomly index into any of the task list. I'm going to get the values uh, and instead of getting new tasks here, the thing that we're going for is the index. Now, what do we have in our memory model right now? We have a remove task ah, with a username and an index. So I should be able to say instead of add, remove task username index, we need to call dot to int because otherwise these are strings. Assuming that works, we get a redirect back to the task list. If uh, for some reason there wasn't data, we go to the task list. If we didn't have a username, we go back to the login. Okay, so that's all behaving very much like our add task from before. The last thing we have to put in place is fill in our model. So how do we delete an index? Uh, I'm sure there are many ways of doing this. The way that I find most useful is with the patch method. Okay, now I'm I'm using lists here, so they're technically uh, immutable. And I guess for the remove, we had it return a boolean because the thing might not uh, be valid. It's possible that your that your delete fails if the index is out of bounds. So I will go ahead and just say first off that I want to check to see if tasks dot get of username is non empty. So that means they have an entry. I guess I could also write up here in front, index is greater than or equal to zero. Negative indices, actually let's do this. Yeah. Actually let's do this so that it's the situation where you can't. If the index is either less than zero or index is greater than or equal to, let's see, or this is empty, or index is greater than or equal to tasks of username. If it's any of those things, we're just going to give back false dot length. Else, we're going to add them in and give back the value true. So how do we add them in? Well, or sorry, how do we remove it? I like the patch method for this. At this point, we know that tasks is defined, so I can just say tasks sub username dot patch. So in case you're wondering what patch does, it takes three arguments, actually a very powerful method. And by just deleting one thing, I'm not really using its full power. I pass in the first element is index. That is the location in the, the list or the sequence where you want to start patching. The second argument is the collection you're going to use to replace it. So patch will actually allow you to insert stuff as well. In our case, we're just removing those, so I'm not inserting anything. And the third argument is how many elements you want to replace. In this case, I'm just deleting one. But like I said, patch would allow me to delete multiple elements. It would allow me to replace those elements with other things. It's a very handy method. That's why there is no remove, because patch is a far more general method. OK, this compiles. Let's see if I've messed anything up here. So we'll hit log out. It will do a rebuild.
And uh, there went sleep. We'll add it back in. Okay, so delete works. Uh, that's it. We have a working task list. Uh, we could create, just to make sure, Wonderful. And we should be able to come back in and still see the other user stuff. There we go. Fully functioning task list using kind of the most basic web 1.0 technology using the play framework. In future videos, we're going to re-implement this with other techniques, different uh, backings for the model because we have some shortcomings with this as far as it's being memory based. Uh, as well as doing things in a less web 1.0 and more of a web 2.0 way. But those are for future videos.